Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna have fun slowing down and making a card. And I was lucky enough to have some beautiful stamps and stencils sent to me by Simon Hurley. And these are some of the products in his latest release. Now he did release even more products, so be sure to check out all the beautiful things that just were released. But I'll share a few of the things in this video today. So first up is this really pretty stamp set. It's called Suck and I'll link everything that you see in the description box below. But I think these are just so cute and I love the sentiments, especially this one that says, you're looking sharp. And I really wanna use that today. It's just so cute. And I have the coordinating dies for that as well, which I absolutely love a coordinating die because I am not a fan of fussy cutting just because I'm not that great at it. And the coordinating dies just give that nice pressed buttery look. So I am so excited to have the coordinating dies to this set. There's also this really fun layering stencil and I think that it pairs with this background stamp at least it looks to be the case so there's this really pretty peel apart background stamp called candles and you can take them apart if you can see they're perforated right here but that is so neat and then there is an additional layering stencil which is so fun I definitely want to use these in an upcoming video so stay tuned for that because these look so fun to play around with he also has another set. Let's see what this is called. This is called Sedona Scene Maker. Oh, on the back it kind of gives you an idea of the scene that can be created with this collection of stencils. So that is super fun as well. And then the final thing is this pretty Moroccan tile background stamp. Could you just see this gold embossed with some gold embossed um, or embossing powder? I think that would be so pretty. I just love this. I think this would be so elegant and fun. So again, there are more things in his release. These are the things that I have in front of me, but be sure to check out the additional things that he has just released. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open these up because I was thinking for this video, I really wanna slow down and give some inspiration on how you can do more of a masculine card. I feel like a lot of the cards that I make on my channel and a lot of the cards that just kind of speak to me are a little bit more pink and frou-frou and girly, but I really want to create more of a masculine card with these stamps and just really have fun getting myself a little bit more challenged and out of my normal comfort zone that I usually stay in. Okay, so stamps, coordinating dies. I also pulled some alcohol markers for a little bit later. And also I want to use a really fun embossing folder for the background, as well as I thought that we could do a really fun kind of tone on tone card and kind of go with this more mint or teal color. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this down because, and I always have that freedom of changing my mind later, but I'll just keep it really honest with where I'm kind of starting in terms of ideas. I'm thinking of doing this in the card base and the panel. So what I'm gonna do is, of course this is eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this right in half and then we'll get started from there. Okay, so I went ahead and trimmed these down. So I have my card base and this is at four and a quarter by 11. That was just trimmed right in half. And I'm gonna set this aside for later. And then I have two A2 size panels. I'm only gonna use one of them, but I'll keep this on hand just in case. But this is where we are going to start. So I think what I'm going to do is get started by embossing this. Okay, I have this new to me embossing folder and it's so neat and I kind of like the masculine look to this, but what I think I'll do before that is trim this down a little bit further. And that's only because I don't want my panel to be the exact size of my card. So I'm just gonna take a quarter of an inch off each side. So starting at four and a quarter, I will just slide that to four. And then again, five and a half, I will slide that to five and a quarter, and that gives me a quarter of an inch off each side. And I want to have it trimmed to size before I emboss this, just so that once the nice embossing is done, I'm not accidentally ruining that nice raised look with my paper trimmer or anything like that. So I like to just do that first. So now 
I'll grab this embossing folder. I'm just going to place this. Now, since it has some nice right angles to it, I'm going to just be very mindful of where I place that. And that looks good to me. I might bring it down just a little bit. I'm just making sure that's lined up really nicely. And then I like to emboss on my Spellbinder, so I'm just gonna run that through my Platinum 6 really quickly, and then we'll get started with our stamping. Okay, so I'm just running that through really quickly. And for this embossing folder, I just needed my platform, my embossing folder with my paper inside, and then my clear cutting plate. And I mentioned that just because all embossing folders are treated so differently. So, oh, that's so pretty. So sometimes you just have to play around with the sandwich that you use. Oh my goodness, how pretty is that? And I love that because I feel like this can definitely be very masculine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, that just looks so fun. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to get my Misty out and we're gonna start stamping. Okay, so I'm going to bring some Memento ink in because I will be using alcohol markers. So this is alcohol marker friendly. I also have some of Simon Hurley's nice cardstock here. And I'm gonna grab my stamps. Now there are so many beautiful ones to choose from. I like to go with what instantly catches my eye. And for me, I really like this here. So I'm gonna grab this. Now, I'm gonna do all of my coloring with alcohol markers, but I want you to note that they have little coordinating stamps for each one. So if you wanted to use some ink pads to go ahead and cover and color this in, then you can do that as well, and that's really fun. So of course, this is going to coordinate here, this will coordinate here, here, and here, so so on and so forth. But I'm gonna go ahead and use alcohol markers, but I wanted to note that. I'm gonna open this up and grab this, and I think I'll stamp it just a couple times just in case, just in case, actually I'll go this way and we should be good to go. Okay, there we go. And since these are brand new to me, I'm just going to kind of prime the stamp, make sure it's all ready to receive the ink. Sometimes it can look a little marbly when you put your ink down on a brand new stamp, any brand new stamp, just because of this oily kind of coating that can sometimes happen when they are creating the stamp. So if you just kind of rub it down, it should be good to go. And if not, you can, it, it only takes a couple stamps and it's good to go. But I can already tell that that worked really well because it's receiving the ink really nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Bring my stamp pressure tool in. And, oh, that's such a nice little delicate stamp. In fact, given how thin that is and how just nice and delicate that is, I'm not gonna put too much pressure on that. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yes, I don't need, I don't need to do a lot of pressure. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more and get a tad bit more contrast. And I was a little shallow in here, I think, because my ink wasn't as dark as the rest of the image. So I'm just gonna focus some pressure there and I should be good. Much better. Oh, isn't that nice? So pretty. So, oh, I did say I was gonna double stamp this. So why not? I'll just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna turn this over and position this here. I need to get some washi tape for my little magnet. But you know, I've made it this long without it, so I'm kind of getting used to picking it up without it. Okay, there we go. And double stamping it actually is a great idea anyway, because again, as you kind of condition the stamp, it stamps better each time. You might even like the second stamp even better. Okay, so let's see which is, I think, the case here. Okay, so I am going to let these set for just a little bit because I'm going to color with my alcohol markers next. I just wanna make sure that that ink is nice and dry, and I'll clean this up in a little while. 
So looking at my coordinating dies, I'm going to just prep the one that I'm going to need for later, which is this. But when looking at the dies, check out this cute die. We have a little hugs die. How cute. But we also have a shadow layer. And I... I love that. So I want to incorporate this as well. So I'm going to set those to the side and then put the rest of these back because I'm not going to use any of the other images for this particular card. But I think this would be super, super fun to use. So I'm wondering, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't decide just yet. My initial, my initial thought is that I could do a tone on tone and kind of cut this out of the same color as our pretty background that we have going here but it might be too close to decide it might just be or not too close really but too soon to decide okay I think my my ink is all set up so we'll pause there in the thought process and let's go ahead and get coloring so what I pulled was where did they run off to okay here are my alcohol markers so I pulled three different colors I have a green shadow G420. It's really hard to see. And then I have also two kind of brownish colors. I have E210, which is brick beige, and E280, which is a sand white. And they're very similar, but just enough uh, differentiation where I think we could play around with that. I'm also just going to use this for my little, um, is it a, a cacti, cactus? I'm not even sure. I I do not have a green thumb at all, at all. I have one plant that I am really good with and everything else, in fact, I like the other one better. Uh, everything else has been a really stressful experience. So sorry about my lack of plant knowledge, but I think that's gonna be really pretty. And I think it just blends really, really nicely and coordinates really nicely here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just use one color for my greens and I'm simply going to just start by coloring in and putting all of my color down. Okay, so I'm just finishing up and again I'm using one color and I'm going to do all of the shading but not right away because when it's still wet if you try to go back and do the shading it just kind of blends immediately with what you've already put down. So I'm going to let that set for a little bit and then I'm going to come back in with the same color and add a little bit of shading to those green parts. Now I'm going to, I'm going to test these out because I always, again they're so similar. I think it's the E210 which is the darker of the two. So E210 is there, and then I have E280, which is a tad lighter. Okay, I'm gonna go through with my darkest first, and I am going to put my darkest on the inside of this pot, just like this. And I'm also going to bring it over on the left and kind of down just like that just kind of have it shaved down I'm also just going to do really quickly oh I'm sorry about my headband um, I'm going to do this little bottom little stand there if you will okay so there's that now I'm going to immediately come in with my lighter shade the E280 I'm going to use the brush side and again these are so similar so there's not a lot of really blending happening here <laughs> it's pretty similar but I'm going to kind of blend that out and I can always go back in and bump it up but then I'm just going to do a really light pull towards the other side and then just finish filling in any areas. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so now, and that'll settle. I know I'm gonna need to do maybe a little bit of work there. Actually, I'm kind of liking how that looks with like the light in the, the middle there. 
I'm not hating it. Okay, so I think that this had enough time to set. I'm gonna go through with my fine tip and I'm just gonna add a little shading to the left, the left sides. And I'm just putting just a little, little strip, if you will, down those left sides. See how pretty that looks? I think it looks nice. So I'm just gonna add that there. And because it dried just a little bit, it's not just sinking into the color that's already there. It's kind of sitting on top, which is nice. So there's a little differentiation there. Okay. And again, that's all just one color, but it's simple. It's really, really, really subtle, but it's there. And I, and I kind of feel like that's just my whole, my whole outlook with coloring. Simple, but there. Okay. So then I think, you know, is the pot good? I sometimes really hate to, I hate to add when, I don't know, I'm kind of, see, at first I was like, oh, I don't like how this is a little dark over here, but I'm kind of digging it. I'm kind of liking it. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it. I think, should I, should I not, you know, when in doubt, just walk away. I'm kind of liking it. Okay, I'm going to leave it. So now what I'm going to do is, do I want to bump up the shadow though just a little? Oh, Bethany. I'm so indecisive. Okay, let me come back in with my darker. I'm just going to make sure that, nope, see, that's why you test. It's not indeed the darker. I'm just going to add just a bump. Just a little. Just there. Okay, I think I like that. Yep, I like it. Okay, I like how we have a lot of tones going on there. I think it makes it look pretty realistic. Okay, so now we don't need this little cutie pie, but I will save it for another card. But I'm going to position, there we go. I'm gonna position that and then tape it down. Okay, so I have my cutting plates in here. I really need to replace them, but I'm, I'm one of those that is also equally kind of stubborn. So I kind of want to just see how long I can go without doing, <laughs> without flipping them around. Okay. I'm going to position this and I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to tape that down. I'm going to hold that up to my, my eye there. I think I might need to shift it up just a hair. Let me shift that up just a hair. It's looking a little low. Okay. I like that. And I'm going to go ahead and send that through. Okay. Here we go. And let's see how this looks. Now, what I'll actually do, even though I have marks on here, because it will not matter. Oh, that's so, oh my goodness. So cute. Oh, the lineup. The lineup and the shadow is just perfect. That turned out really nice. Okay, it's not gonna matter, but what I wanna do is I want to add a couple layers. Oops, don't you ruin your embossed look. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple layers underneath that. So what I'll do is just place this die here and here and get some extra layers of that little pot. That way we can build it up later. Okay, so I have my little three layers there. And I'm going to set this all to the side for a moment because I kind of want to get an idea of where we're at here. So let's grab some liquid glue and I'm just going to use this Barely Art glue. I really like it. And I'm going to stack these. So just adding a little glue and Stack one, get that all placed. And then I will do, obviously, my nice colored one right on top. So at the timing of this video, Valentine's Day is coming, coming up. And I don't know that I'll, I don't know. I was kind of thinking I would use this for my Valentine's Day card, but we shall see. I also just like having kind of cards on hand just for, just for fun. Okay, look how nice that looks. See, when you just add, I love doing that. It just looks so nice. Okay, so here we are. This is where we're at so far. Super simple, super fun. I think what I'm gonna do 
is actually build the card that way because I just like to see all of it like how it's going to look when it's finished that way it's just going to kind of help me see where I want to go from here okay so bringing in my card base and what I'm going to do is because I think it'd be really nice to have the same color for the card base I think that that is kind of actually maybe a design thing that I feel is going to keep this looking really masculine. You could always do a white card base, but I just think that, I don't know, it's kind of making it a little bit more masculine in my opinion. Okay, so I am going to, again, this is 11 by four and a quarter. So half of 11, we'll put our center at five and a half. And then we'll have a nice top folding card. And we will grab the bone folder. And there we go. Now I'm already thinking that I want to add something more. Now, of course, I'm going to do this is not end game. Of course, I want to do um, my sentiment. I'm really thinking this hugs. And then I'm thinking you're looking sharp is gonna go on the inside. I think that would be so cute. Oh, I really like this tone on tone. Okay, let's bump it up with some foam tape and then um, I'm thinking what I'll do is I might bring out my arches dies. Okay, so we have foam tape. Let's really bump this up because we'll get some more dimension, but also just some shadowing, which is really nice. So I'm going to do three on the back here. Okay, so I have my three foam tapes. I'm not going to put this down just yet because of... See how that shadow, oh, love it. Okay, this is this is exactly what I was hoping. Okay, so now let me show you, see, when I kind of shield the lights a little bit, it just is so nice. Okay, so now what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab some arches, and I also think I'm going to grab my last little piece of cardstock here. So we're essentially using all of that eight and a half, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Let's grab some arches and, and let's play around with, with a little bit more visual interest here. Okay, I keep these arches so handy because I love them dearly and I grab for them often. So what we'll do is we're gonna put this here. I'm going to grab And now I, I like, I like this because I could do, mm, let's see, I still have room for my hugs. I think that's the size. I can play around with going bigger, but I don't, oh, why not? Might give us a little bit more breathing room. Let's see, do I like that? I actually think I might. I also like that it's pretty equal around each top, bottom, side to side. And it does give us a little bit more breathing room. Okay, let's do, let's do that. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to re-emboss another panel because I was thinking we would have another embossed on an embossed, if that makes sense. Oh, but you know what I think I need to do first? I need to, I need to cut this down. Okay, hold on, we gotta cut this down first. So, let's save as much of that as we can because I, I kinda wanna use this for um, the hugs maybe, we'll see. So, let's send this through and cut one piece out and then we'll emboss this next, so that way we don't ruin our embossed look. Okay, very nice. Now we'll grab our embossing folder. Let's put this to the side so we don't lose it. And we'll set this aside so we can potentially use it for our sentiments. Still, still not 100% about that. So, what I'm doing here is I know that I want this to be centered, which that looks about like that. So now, I'm just kind of referencing where those little plus signs are because I want to see, so do you see how it kind of stops 
in the middle, not in the middle, but like right at a plus sign, right at a plus sign, and then right here. Okay, so I just kind of want to mirror that over here because then I it will look like it's kind of just popping out popping up out of that. So I'm just going to find two plus signs, mirror that look, line it up the best that I can. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to use some foam tape. And then I'm going to run this through my spell binders really quickly. I think that will look nice. So you see how I kind of mirrored that? Remember how it was kind of stopping there at a plus sign, stopping there at a plus sign? I think that's close enough and that's lined up really nice. Okay, let me go and emboss this and then we will continue kind of deciding where to take this card. Okay, so here is my second little embossed look and I think that's really, really fun. So what I'm going to do, now you could you could do this in any color, um, any color that you think. In fact, should we play around with maybe doing it in white as well? We absolutely could. I have another piece of Simon Hurley's cardstock. Why not? Let's just play around. Let's give ourselves some design options. Although I'm really, I'm really thinking that tone on tone is really pretty. Let's do this. And let me go ahead and just lather, rinse, repeat and do the exact same thing. Here is my second one out of white. Just for fun to see. Ooh, I don't know. See, I don't like that. I don't think so. No, that's not for me. Okay, but I'm going to keep that because we can do something else with that in another card. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use more foam tape and bump this up. And let's just see. Oops, I got a little, a little much there, but we're going to kind of have to play around with it anyway. So let's kind of do some foam tape surgery. Kind of get it every which way. And there we go. Okay, and I might even add just a little there. Okay, what a mess. There we, oh, I like that. Okay, that looks, see, and bumping it up with the foam tape makes all the difference. I think that's really just visually super, super fun. And then we can kind of line it up with those little plus marks so it looks like it's just bumping out of the page. See how when you are mindful of lining up that embossing folder? I think it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be really, really close. I think that's really neat. I like it. Okay, and then this will go here. We're not gonna use any more dimension on that because we stacked it. I think this is really cute. I like this. Okay, so I think I'm going to solidify everything, these two pieces, because I, I'm really liking how that all looks. So I'm going to open this up, magnet that down, and then no matter what, we're going to put the panel down and we're going to put the little arched panel down. So we might as well just put those down and have them stop moving all over our project. Okay, there's that. Very nice, and let's do this one. And I'm gonna add some liquid glue to this because I want to really have some grace when positioning this because again, I wanna line up those little plus signs to make sure that that visually has the effect that I'm hoping. Okay, so in fact, I'll use some tweezers maybe. Okay, so if I line that up like this and like this. I think. Oh, I might have gotten a little off there. A little, maybe a little off, but we're going to run with it. Okay. It looks really good at the bottom though. <laughs> and everything else is kind of going to Oh, I think it looks okay. Okay, so then this will go there. And now let's decide on the sentiment. So of course we're gonna do the hugs. Not sure if we'll do the shadow layer and, well, I don't know. Just don't want it to be too crowded. But I also like that the shadow layer allows, ooh, that'd be kind of fun, um, allows us to really line that up nice. Okay, so should we do tone? Okay, should we continue our tone on tone look? I, I was also thinking about gold, but I kind of think gold is gonna be too, it's gonna clash with our pot. I think it's gonna be too much. 
So what I think I'll do is I think I'm going to go with the tone on tone. I'm going to grab, can we use every little inch of this? I think we can. So first let's do a shadow layer just to see what that's going to give us in terms of size because I want to see if that's even going to be too crowded. And then we're going to cut out our letters. Again, I want to take every little piece of this cardstock and I think we can do it two more times down that down that little side sorry that was off camera but I think that'll look really nice okay so I have all of my letters I'm just making sure that they're right side up and now I'm just going to take my glue once more and I'm going to layer all of my letters so I'm going to grab my little wand here it will make it a little bit easier and I'll just start gluing. So lining, getting a little glue on first. There we go. Oops, I'm trying not to do too much. I already know that that is way too much. And sometimes with H's and things, you have to be careful because there might be an, a, a definitive right or wrong way. Oh, I got too much glue on that, but it, it'll dry clear and we, we're gonna make it. But that looks like it lined up really well. Okay. There we go. And then less glue on round two. Just a little tiny, tiny little bit. Spray glue probably would be good for this, but I think I'm gonna run with the liquid glue for this one. Okay, so I'll go ahead and work on that. Again, three layers. And I think that's gonna look really nice. I'll go ahead and just Place them right under a little block as I go. That way they can set really nice and we'll be good. Okay, so I just finished all of my letters. They look really good. And now I just need to decide if I do want to do the shadow layer or if I'd like these letters to stand on their own. So with the shadow layer, we have them looking somewhat like... Ooh, I think I like the shadow layer. And again, it's kind of a safe choice too because you can line it up really nice. I don't know though, would it be so simple? Or much more simple to, hmm, I'm kind of wondering. I'm bringing in a little piece of vellum and I think let's see this I think this is an A2 size so five and a half I am thinking I'll go down to four and a half and do an inch we can always trim it down more but I feel like I'm loving the tone on tone but I feel as if we need just a tad differentiation so what if we added a band of vellum now this is where you would not want to attach this beforehand but we can still we can still get this to work so if we added that we had this kind of overlap a little bit you're still getting the tone on tone but we're also providing just a little bit of contrast for our sentiment. I think that's it. That's it for me. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm going to, first of all, decide on this band. So, okay, so what I did was I took my vellum, I folded down a quarter of an inch on this side and what I think I'll do, now this is gonna be a cheat because, I, I mean, I'm stuck here. I've already put this down. This is just real life crafting. But if I do that, oh, I think this is gonna work. Then what I can do is just add a little glue here, place it in here, get it, get it placed. Then I think I'll trim this part by hand and do the same thing over there. So I'm gonna add a little glue to this inside lip this is just real moment by moment card making. I 
pink like that and wrap. And I'm going to take my bone folder and just kind of help that. I'm just going to nudge it under there and help it attach. Just like that. Okay? That way I know it's going to lay down. Just kind of helping it meet if that if that makes any sense at all. Okay. Then grabbing my scissors, I'll do the same thing here. Okay, and I'll fold down a quarter of an inch. Okay. I think that's gonna look nice. Add some glue. Okay, and then just with, again, my bone folder, encouraging that to stay. Okay, could that look cleaner? It absolutely could, but I think for the order of operations that we did that in, it's not too bad. Okay, I just like the little kind of matte look that that offers. That looks really nice. Okay, so I think maybe deciding on the letters first is gonna be, I think that's gonna be the better way to start. So let's do hugs and we'll bring in the, well, I was gonna say the T-square ruler, but I think we probably could just eyeball this. And you of course can absolutely, I'm wondering if that S needs to go the other way. Does that S need to go the other way? Nope, I think it was the right way. Okay, one, two, see how it just offers a little bit of contrast there? I think that that's nice. Okay, T-square ruler for sure. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's put this here and move that up a little bit. And let's do, which way, which way is this? Okay, this way. Let's do that and do our glue. So tweezers, I think, and, or maybe our little picker upper tool. Let's do, I like to go from the middle out. So I'm just gonna pick this up and add glue. And actually, I do think I'll need the tweezers. I don't know how I'm gonna pick that up now. And place this down. Okay, where is, I think it's there. So one, so too much glue. Okay, and then my last letter. And I think that actually looks pretty good. And you know, it's homemade. So it's full of love. Okay, now I'll glue this little guy and we'll finish off with the cute little inside sentiment. I like how it interacts with the little vellum piece there. I think that's kind of neat. So, I think there looks really good. Okay, so you could add sequins if you would want or any type of embellishment, but I think in, in keeping it masculine, I think that is where I'm going to stop. So, I think that looks good though. Okay, so now what I think I'll do is do an inside sentiment. Let me grab my Misty and my cute little stamps. Okay, so I have a little insert for my card and I just trimmed down an A2 panel. Again, I just took a quarter of an inch off each side and I really like your looking sharp. I think that's so fun. So I'm just going to place that on the inside of my card up at the top, and I think, whoa, making sure I did that right. I think 
Yeah, that should be good. That should be good. Okay. So, let me just condition that. And I'll use my memento again. You could also bring in a color if you'd like. I like the crisp and contrast look of just a black ink. I'm just going to go ahead and just do a little light pressure. And that's actually it. I don't even need to restamp that. So I'm going to gently bring that out. And I think what I'll do is just bring in a little bit of tape runner because I think I'm just going to, now you could just stamp this on the inside, but I really like the, the look of um, a white inside of a card. I think that's just really classic looking. Plus I like how you can see the ink just really nice. Not that you wouldn't be able to see ink on this. It's a very nice light green, but to each their own. Okay, so I'm going to just add tape runner to this. You could do adhesive of your choice, but I think tape runner is appropriate. And let's see if I can line this up nice. Just like Okay, there's the inside of the card. Oh my goodness. I feel like I decided and then redecided a million times on this card, but I think it turned out really fun and I like the masculine nature of it. I think it's just really fresh looking, really fun, and I liked being challenged to do something a little bit different than I usually do. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that this inspired you with ways that you can just use different design choices to take a little bit more of a masculine spin on a card. And I think this turned out really, really cute. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I can't wait to hear what you think in the comments as well. And I can't wait to show you what additional content is coming to the channel pretty soon. All right, everyone, see you in the next video. Oh, I forgot to show just all that dimension, that final dimension. I really like it. All right, see you soon.